Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Art Verhoeven and I have created a series of plugins for the Rename 2. Most of these plugins are for free. You can find a link below this video where you can download these plugins. Uh, in this link you can see all the plugins available at the moment. Uh, in this video I want to show you uh, how to install the plugins and to show you some general uh, things that you need to know about these plugins. Okay, when I go to uh, the Explorer, you can see that I've already downloaded one plugin file, which is in a zip file. This zip file you have to copy to a USB device and on the USB device you have to extract everything directly to the root of the USB device. This is important because uh, what you will extract is a GMA2 folder with all subfolders. So if you extract it directly on the root of a USB device then the console and the on PC are able to read these files. So uh, let's close now the uh, Explorer and go to the on PC. In the on PC I created a little show but what's important now is that in the show we have this command uh, window with a macro field and some command line feedback so that we can see what we do. Now I hear you think, but we are loading plugins. That's correct. But the thing is that my plugins all are controlled uh, exclusively by macros. You'll never have to pinch directly on the plugin. It's even more that the plugins are not really loaded into the board. They're loaded into the memory of the board. And that means that if you take out your uh, USB device and you leave the board, then you take your plugins with you. And uh, so that no one will uh, have access to your plugins. Uh, in the same time, when your show is running and you take out your USB device, then the plugins are already in the memory so they will stay operative until someone tries to restart the show on the same board or another board doesn't matter that's why we uh, we don't have the plugins inside the the show file but you have it in separate files and we need uh, a macro to import them so we go to import first this macro therefore we go to import export we go to import macros and then on the usb device there's only one macro which is called plugin loader let's import this macro and uh, importing this macro it comes in the macro field when we run this macro a lot of things are happening first it's searching for the plugins and it's loading all the plugins and when the plugins are loaded it will create a series of macros to run these plugins and these macros depends on the plugin that uh, we are uh, we have loaded we can load several plugins at a time uh, all the plugins will be in uh, you can put them all in the same USB device and you might override some files because uh, there are shared files between all the plugins uh, the thing is that you in that case should uh, take care that you have the last version of the files on your uh, USB device so even if the new plugin is uh, a free plugin and you have uh, one bought an, another plugin which is much more big much bigger and powerful than the free plugin you download it later 
you always have to put the last plugin on top so that you have the last uh, common files. Um, all right, after creating the macros for your plugins, there will, uh, the plugin loader will try to create a startup macro so that you don't have to run the plugin loader manually every time you start up your show. It could be that you have already your own startup macro for your own reasons. And so if the plugin loader detects a macro, a startup macro, uh, it comes with this pop-up that says that we have a startup macro found and we can uh, override it, we can replace it, but then your startup macro will be destroyed. So you can confirm to override it or you can cancel it uh, uh, to keep your startup macro. If you cancel it, then uh, you uh, will be asked to do one. You now have to do one of the two things. You either have to run the plugin loader every time you start your show, which is a hassle. So the best other thing is to do is to adapt your startup macro so that when you start your show, it will run the plugin loader as well. Uh, that's what we're going to choose here. We're going to cancel from here so that uh, our startup macro is not overwritten. And in a later time, we will adapt our startup macro. But as you have written your own startup macro, you probably know how to adapt it so that it also does a go on the plugin loader. Okay, plugins by, uh, this is a copyright message, and this is my email address, so you can send me any comments over these plugins. And then there is a, a possibility to switch to Spanish. Uh, I'm living in Spain, so I created these plugins also in Spanish, but we will stay in English for this video. Now we have uh, here a series of macros and uh, we can see two things that are uh, worth to mention. The first thing is that these two macros have an I in the upper right corner indicating that they have information in the information field. This is the information that we just entered. In the first case is the information it says that uh, we want to keep our uh, startup macro and we don't want the plugin loader to override this. And the second one is that we want to stay in English and we don't want to switch to Spanish. So uh, the next time you run all this, they will not ask the same questions again. Then the other thing that is worth to mention is that there are different colors for different kinds of macros. The first ones are in black. These are macros intended to use during a show setup, uh, not during a live performance. The first ones is quite logic, and the other ones, they're real big macros. Uh, they use a lot of, need a lot of time to finish, and so it's not very nice to do that during the show, it's for preparing the show. Then we have another three macros in, in two different colors, and these macros are switches for different uh, modes of uh, working. Uh, the first one is in gray, that means that it's this is not activated. We can activate it just by clicking on it, and it turns to green, so it's now activated and it's in a set break mode that is for another video where I want to explain your the attribute picker. And it has a third option, the release break option, which is colored red, as you can see. Then if we pinch again, it will get back to the first mode. 
The other ones have only two modes, an on and off mode, or a safe and a more dangerous mode. The safe mode is like the default mode, and you can change it to another mode if you need it for certain uh, special circumstances. Uh, so we change it and now it, it changes the name and it changes the color to red. So you can see that it's doing something else. If you click it again, so it, it comes back to where it was. This one. Also, you can put off and on. Right. Then there is only one more thing that I need to tell you in this video. That is that uh, the big plugins, they uh, normally work with a load of uh, pop-ups that ask for information. You might uh, start one of these plugins and one of these macros and then come to the conclusion that you need to find some of the information because you don't remember exactly uh, the information that is that the plugin asks for or you might come to the conclusion that you want to do something completely different so you want to stop this because this is going to take some time to finish well there is one escape route and that is entering the letter ickies in your pop-up it is ickies when the plugin finds an ickies in the pop-up it says oh aborted by user and it goes out of the, the the macro okay this is all for now uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that uh, we'll meet again in, in our next videos in where I'm going to explain the different uh, plugins individually uh, spread the word that uh, you can find here some plugins and, well, I hope to see you again.